Hi, I'm John from Inkno and I'm really glad to see you here in this video. In this video, I'm super excited to share with you our latest updates for ClassPoint. This is a pretty major one with 10 new updates. So let's get started now. Number one, question button states. The question button has been the magic power of ClassPoint. You can add it to any slide and click on it during slideshow to start receiving live responses from students. Now, we have made the button even smarter by introducing a few button states. When you first add it, it's a blue button showing you the specific question type. During slideshow, once you click and start a question, it changes to the yellow in progress state and shows you in real time how many students have responded to a question along with a timer. Lastly, once the mission is closed, the button will turn green, indicating there are safe student responses in it. Number two, review student responses anytime. Now let's continue with the green button you just saw. The green button has all your student submissions automatically saved inside, and you can access them anytime and anywhere. All you have to do is to click the green button again when you are in slideshow, or you can click the view responses button when you are in PowerPoint edit mode. Number three, Correct answer for multiple choice. Let's take a look at multiple choice question options. Apart from the number of choices and the checkbox to enable multiple selections, you now can define one or more correct answers just by selecting from the drop down list. In slideshow, when submission is closed, you can toggle the show correct answer and feedback to students whether they've got it right. Number four, the word cloud activity. This is a fun activity form where your expected submission from students is a word, a number, or a short phrase. Their submissions will be collected and displayed as a word cloud, so it's really a great way to brainstorm ideas or get quick opinions. You can highlight the top answers to make them stand out even more. Number five, the slide drawing activity. This new question type allows you to send the current slide to students and let them draw on it and then send it back. There are tons of ways to use slide drawing. For example, you can ask students to circle out grammar mistakes, you can annotate on images, draw graphs, or even send them a blank slide so they can write their answers and submit back. Number six, let students submit answers anonymously. Sometimes students are more active when the quiz is anonymous because they know they won't be judged. To facilitate this, you can check hide participant names when viewing responses. This way, their names will not be displayed. Note that this is only to encourage participation, not a true anonymous submission. Their names are still recorded for your review. To see their names, simply uncheck the box and view responses again. Number seven, quick poll templates. You can use a quick poll activity when you have ad hoc questions to ask or when you want to get quick feedback from students. In the new update, we have prepared two commonly used templates for quick poll, a true, false, a yes, no, unsure. Alternatively, you can always still define the number of options here and start the poll. Number eight, audience slide viewer. Now, if you look at the slideshow options here, you can see one additional checkbox, enable audience slide viewer. If you check it, students will be able to see your current slide and better follow along with your presentation. Slide animation is perfectly supported. Students can also download the slides as needed. However, if you rather don't want to share your slides this way, you can simply uncheck this box. Number nine, customize whiteboard background. This next update is about the whiteboard customization I mentioned in my last video. In this update, you can customize up to six different backgrounds by uploading images or uploading your slides. Once these backgrounds are set, they will be available in slideshow for you to add. Number 10, the feedback icon. Almost all the new features I just mentioned are built based on teachers' feedback and suggestions. Without real users' feedback, we could never come this far. So with this update, there is a feedback icon you can find on the class point tab. Here you can rate us, you can give us feedback or suggest new features. I want to thank you again for your input and encourage you to continue with this to help us constantly improve ClassPoint. So there you have it, the 10 new updates we're going to release on the 15th of July. 
Everyone will be upgraded to a standard plan and your trial will be extended to the 30th of September. Also, you can now register for our weekly Classpoint 101 webinar, specially designed for new users. After the session, you should be able to confidently use Classpoint in your daily teaching. To register, please head to our website at classpoint.io. Again, I'm John from Inkno and thank you so much for watching.